Okay, this is just a preview disclaimer. Please wear headphones during the review to help you use the review to the full potential. And if they're open back, make sure to isolate yourself from other sound sources. Thank you. Reviewing this guy, the Audio Technica AT8004. If you are interested in this microphone, it will set you back around $99 on Amazon, although according to the Audio Technica website, it is discontinued. Although, it still says buy now, so I'm not sure if that's actually accurate. For this review, I am connecting, as always, directly to my Behringer UMC 204 HD audio interface with phantom power turned off because this is a dynamic microphone not a condenser or an active dynamic microphone and I will do no post-processing to the audio but I will very unlikely boost it in post so check the doobly-doo to see what I did. Now let's take a look at what comes in the box. You get a clip which comes with a 5 8 to 3 inch microphone stand adapter, I believe pre-installed. Although they although it is made of plastic. And yeah. This is what it looks like. You get a carrying case with a bit of padding inside of it, and it feels pretty nice. And it also has the Audio Technica logo on it. You get a bit of documentation. And I am I forgetting anything? The microphone, of course! <laughs> now, in terms of build quality, it feels pretty good. It has an all metal construction with a metal mesh grill that I am not able to deform with my fingers at all. Now, please note that the grill is not removable. And on the microphone, you will no find no switches, bells, whistles, or horns. But on the bottom, you will find the XLR port, which is diagonal. And then in terms of specifications, um, it is a dynamic microphone. It has an omnidirectional polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 80 Hz to 16 kHz. Open circuit sensitivity of negative 51 dB, or 2.8 millivolts per pascal, RE1 volt at 1 pascal. It has an impedance of 300 ohms, a weight of 5.6 ounces or 160 grams. It is 5.93 inches long or 150.5 millimeters long, 1.41 inches in head diameter or 35.8 millimeters. It has an XLR male connector and as you can see this is the this is the polar pattern i had to zoom in a lot because i can guarantee you i could not see it and also the polar pattern no that is the frequency response chart sorry anyways let's just reset zoom and you can see the comparisons Okay, well, I'm needing to redo this entire thing because I left a compressor running. Dang it! So anyways, for the spoken word test, we will do the Gettysburg Address. Not going to do the non-tests again. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Okay, I'm now hand-holding the microphone because I am going to do a polar pattern test. So, here we are at the zero degree position, spinning, slowly rotating around to 90 degrees to show you what it sounds like from the 90 degree position from the side, rotating around slowly to as close to 180 degrees as we can get with the... 
that power switch does get in the way a little. And now we are rotating back around slowly, ever so slowly, to the 90 degree, or no, 270 even degree position to show you what it sounds like once again from the sides before rotating and arriving back at the front of the microphone. Yay! Okay, and now we are going to test some handling noise. So this is me carelessly passing the microphone back and forth between my hands and rubbing the microphone as well. And this is how it does with handling noise. And now the DIY foam windscreen is back off. Ma which, by the way, the DIY foam windscreen is actually made out of its own packaging material. But yeah, we are now going to do a plosive test. Pineapple pizza and pumpkin pie. Pineapple pizza and pumpkin pie. Pineapple pizza and pumpkin pie. Not the greatest. I am now right on top of the microphone to show you the hopefully non-existent proximity effect. Because this is an omnidirectional microphone about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth. And this is how it sounds. About six inches off of the microphone without level matching. And this is how it sounds. We are now one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Once again, for reference, this is three inches away from the microphone. This is six inches away from the microphone with level matching. This is one foot away from the microphone with level matching. I am now about two feet away from the microphone and about four feet away from the microphone. Okay, I am now using a recording of a lawnmower behind the microphone to show you how much of my voice versus how many background sounds it picks up. And, yeah. And soon I will have the a traffic sounds open. Come on. This is not a great quality. Is it actually that long? And this is how many how much of my voice versus how much of the traffic sounds it picks up. And now or not now, but soon I'm going to play both. Okay, so yes, here we go. I'm now playing both back. And this is how much of my voice versus how much of these it picks up. And soon I will do a fairly standard keyboard test. Okay, I'm now typing on a keyboard that I did actually put directly behind the microphone with very loud keycaps, but no mechanical switches to show you how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And now for you gamers, I better not catch you using this for gaming though, I am typing on the DSAW keys and the spacebar. And now I am recording in a fairly okayly treated room with the stuffed animals here, a blanket back here, clothes here and here. Yeah, it's a closet. And this is how it sounds. Okay, I am now in a completely untreated room, and this is how it sounds. Okay, I'm now going to tap the microphone in as many places as possible to see if there are any resonant frequencies. Okay, I am now going to bump the boom arm, even though this you should not ever bump. And also the underside of my table. To see how it does with that. This is not something that is recommended. Some people do it anyway. Oh yeah, 
Why am I using this microphone to sing? This is an ENG microphone. Why am I using this microphone to sing? Okay, in terms of pros, this microphone does have that ENG microphone sound, which is actually a good thing. It helps eliminate background noise. It's omnidirectional, which helps when you are interviewing someone to not cut off their words accidentally. It did pretty well for an omnidirectional microphone in terms of handling noise, in my opinion. Its sensitivity fell off really quickly, which is important for one of these kinds of microphones. I was still intelligible over the background noises, at least. And it sounded pretty good in an untreated room like this, as well. And it rejected my boom arm bumps pretty well. And I think most of the desktop bumpage was through the air. And then in terms of cons, it doesn't do the best with plosives. It does sound a bit like an AM radio, although that's important so that it does reject those background noises. It is omnidirectional so it's going to pick up sounds from every direction. It did have some coloration towards the sides and the back, as well as some sensitivity droppage, and it did definitely have some handling noise. Webcam, please stop focusing like that. Or defocusing. Okay, now my overall thoughts for this microphone is, it seems like a pretty good microphone for ENG, although according to audiotechnica.com it says it's discontinued, but it's still in stock, so not sure w whether it actually is, and let's see. Audio Technica 804, the, uh, the AT804, it actually says that right there, let's see. The Audio Technica AT804 has been discontinued, the AT8004 is a similar model. I believe the AT8004 is actually a successor to it. But then it says discontinued for some reason. Now, that being said, would I recommend this microphone? Well, it says it's discontinued, so no. But if it weren't discontinued, then yes, absolutely I would. It would be, well, it is quite a bit cheaper, or it was quite a bit cheaper than the ElectroVoice RE Sim than the Electrovoice 635A, not an RE microphone. However, Audio-Technica says it's discontinued, so I am going to go out and say that it is discontinued, so... Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for. I really do hope you've enjoyed. If you did, then please do hit the like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But anyways, this has been Sadie Sam's. Cheers for watching, and I will see you all later. Bye!